It's 12 p.m. over here, so we're in the middle of a work day, you know, but we're catching a lunch break to chat with you. So appreciate you for That's joining nice. us. Yeah. Where are you tuning in from? Uh, Madrid. Yeah, Spain. Ooh, I'm a little bit jealous. We're <laughs> heading out to Europe in a couple in a couple weeks, and we always want to try to hit Spain. Um, but uh, yeah, you that's, should. That sounds amazing. What's up in Madrid? I think it's, the Spain is the best place in Europe, so I don't know why I coming to to spain oh you, well. you have to come to to madrid uh you should, you should come to barcelona as well sevilla mm -hmm. i don't know so i actually i studied abroad in universita autonoma de barcelona that's where oh, i went yeah yeah oh really so i went How there long? for one semester but it was back in 2016 okay. and so i love spain but i never got yeah. a chance to go to madrid i only went to sevilla and barcelona Hmm. and some other little cities inland i don't remember but it was it was cheaper to fly to paris and fly to germany and other places instead yeah. of madrid madrid was expensive to fly to i don't know why yeah, or the train it's the best city <laughs> no it's because it's the the best city in in europe so because barcelona barcelona is, is also really nice mm -hmm. but it's not it's not like how am i going to explain if you, if you want to know Spain, you have to go to other cities like Madrid or probably the south of Spain, like Sevilla, Malaga. Barcelona is, how can I say this? <laughs> is it touristy? Like, is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, exactly, exactly. There are like too many people from other parts of the world. So mm -hmm. I, actually, I live in Barcelona for years. Oh, wow. wow. What, what is the EDM scene like in Spain? Uh, it used to be quite big some time ago, like when when all these big room stuff explode around 2014 mm -hmm. or something like that. There, there used to be like a lot of parties, like a lot all over Spain. But now EDM in Spain is like really like small. Like actually you can even find any party, like maybe some festivals have some EDM DJs. Also in Barcelona, there are some parties for foreign people, like because in, in Barcelona there are there are like clubs for foreign people, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. Pacha, Suton, yeah, and those Pacha. clubs. <laughs> yeah. So those clubs sometimes have some EDM DJs, but in Spain, it's mm -hmm. all about techno, like techno and oh. and urban music. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's when I think cool. of when I think of EDM in Spain, I just think of ibiza in the big room you know you got like yeah, but, the typical yeah, but, you know martin garrix dimitri vegas and like mike which i think they're annoying live <laughs> they just yeah, talk the, the so thing, much <laughs> the, the thing about ibiza is is like it's not spain you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's like it's from a space part of spain but it's <laughs> like a different world you know what i mean very so touristy if you, if you, again yeah no it's like it, it's like a different country you know like they have like this big uh, clubs and everything and i don't know if you if you yeah. ask me about edm in spain i i i, I could never think about ibiza you know i can yeah. just tell you about like the because it's an island you know so mm -hmm. yeah i mean i guess i can see why it would not feel like spain because i did go there for a couple of days but i just went there to yeah. party that's all i did <laughs> and then i remember mm -hmm. most of it <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like the las vegas Spain, literally <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah but as i say like here in spain like edm is like not the bass music edm and all this there mm -hmm. are like some small parties but not not really anything important but like techno is huge in spain like there are like so many clubs doing techno like underground music and you know about music reggaeton that's mm -hmm. <laughs> The, oh, the yeah. reggaeton is all over the place here in Spain, you know? Every oh, club yeah. is reggaeton. Everybody wants reggaeton. So it's kind of <laughs> So you, you guys, when you go play shows, it's mostly in other countries in Europe then, right? Yeah, basically. Yeah, sometimes in mm -hmm. Spain, 
we actually had a show like one month ago in Spain. It was in the north of Spain in Bilbao. Oh, there is a, yeah. Yeah, there, there is like a, a really small underground bass music club in Spain. In, in Bilbao, oh. sorry. Yeah, they actually, they usually bring like like kind of big bass names like uh, mm-hmm. Virtual Riot. Uh, last time was the uh, Looney Tunes. Uh, San Holo, like they, they, wow. they when, when yeah, when they, there is an American DJ or something like touring in Europe, they usually book uh, them. And yeah, we played there like two weeks, like one month ago. It's a really small club for like 500 people, but it's like a, like a real club. You know what That's I mean? It's pretty this, big. Yeah, this club uh, vibe because everybody that goes to this club, they don't go because um, like a, f- a hype or fashion or something like that. They go because they really like the DJs that are playing there. So like the, the atmosphere there is like crazy, crazy. That's the so best. Th- yeah, that's one of the, the clubs. And there there are some like festivals in Spain and we usually play some of them. But in Spain, it's really difficult to get shows, especially for our music, mm-hmm. you know what I yeah. mean? Because if, if you are like a tech house DJ or maybe more EDM, like like this kind of Martin Garris thing, it could be maybe easier to get a show by like bass music, <laughs> like drum <laughs> and bass and bass house dubstep. That's really like in Spain, it, there, there are no like parties for that. So yeah, Damn. most of the shows that, yeah, most of the shows that we do is like uh, out of Spain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I feel like, most of the international artists that we've interviewed on the podcast are usually yeah. from France or Germany. Mm-hmm. Budapest. Budapest is, yeah. I, I, it's a yeah. lot bigger it's than good. I thought for bass yeah. music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's actually getting really big. They're like big, making big festivals. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Yeah. Did you see that one with like, Keizo? Yeah, yeah. The thing is that, I don't know, in Spain, people is, it's not like in other parts of the world. In Spain, people really like party you know but they don't give uh they don't care sorry about <laughs> culture you know or something like that they just want to get drunk or how do you say this in english uh hook up no like yeah like, yeah hook up you know <laughs> yeah that's the only thing that people care here in spain get drunk and do that you know what i mean they don't care hook, who's hook up with the international girls <laughs> yeah yeah that's the only thing they care so yeah you so guys it's are difficult to yeah Sorry, I was gonna say you guys are playing a show in Estonia next week. Yeah, next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we are playing a show. Is the, I think it's the fourth time that we play in that club. Wow, that's a huge yeah, market crazy. then. Yeah, it's like um, in that in those countries around that area. I don't know why, but our music is, is quite popular. Like mm-hmm. the base, the the base house base house songs that we used to make, they got really popular there. Also, the drum and bass music that we are making and i don't know i we play once in that clubs like three years ago and since then we have been playing like every year so it's a really nice club actually really big that's awesome so i mean yeah. just out of curiosity and just for like the listeners uh it's you and arturo you guys are the yeah. duo that make up subshock and evangelos yeah. So how did you two meet have you been lifelong friends and you just decided to start making music how did this all happen well, it's a kind of long and funny story. I will I try, I will try to make it short. But uh, some years ago... <laughs> we like ago, the stories. Before, okay, okay. Uh, so the thing is that uh, before we met, I used to live in Canada, in Vancouver. Oh, okay. So oh, okay. yeah, I, I, I started the, the soup sock branding over there. You know, and I used to make dubstep, only dubstep. I used to release on extension label, like a really old label that he used. I, I, don't, I think that he doesn't have that label was it, anymore Rotten, it was called yeah. rotten yeah 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 so i used to release in that label i used to i also used to release on do you know diesel boy it's mm-hmm. like a really old drum mm-hmm. based dj from from us yeah i used to release uh, stuff with him so the thing is that since i was living in, in vancouver like people in spain thought that i was canadian okay so arturo he liked my music so he, he he started to send me like message on uh, social media and he used to uh, wrote me in English, you know, because he thought mm-hmm. that I was from Vancouver. So when I came back to, to Spain from Vancouver, uh, we met in a club. And it was funny because the first time he, he talked to me in, Spanish, in, in English, 
because he, he, he thought that I was uh, from Vancouver. And it was funny because I told him, I, I told him in Spanish, mm -hmm. what are you asking me if I'm from, from the Barrio del Pilar? Barrio del Pilar is like uh, my hood, you know, my yeah, hood yeah. in Madrid. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm from Madrid, what the fuck? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> so then we start to be friends there. And uh, this club where we met, uh, it was a really like popular club in, in Madrid for EDM. Mm -hmm. And he was one of the resident DJs. And um, they, when I came back to Spain, uh, they invited me to, to be one of the residents. So we, we were both the residents of this club and we were playing, not together, but uh, there was like a festival in another city where they book uh, the resident DJs from this club. So, because a uh, problem with the schedule, with the times, uh, they had to put us together, like playing together, like a back-to-back -back set. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because, first of all, it was a really good, like, set. And our managers were there and it, they were like, um, you are actually better together. <laughs> yeah, than separate, <laughs> you know? Uh -huh. we actually, right. we also, yeah, we also had a lot of fun playing together. So we start doing a lot of these kind of back-to-back -back, uh, sets mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all over Spain. And then we start making like a couple of songs together. I don't know. And we've, we found like, um, I don't know, we found, how do you say this? We, we, we found us like really comfortable, like doing like these sets together, like traveling together, making messing together. So I don't know, we, we all decided to, to, to get together. And that's how we, st we started. I love well, that. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, almost maybe I like, made it, like too long. <laughs> and, well, no, that's a good story. I mean, it's almost like sometimes, you know, mistakes, like in the moment, they seem like, oh, it's so bad that this happened. But then it follows into something that's meant to be. And like so many people yeah. love both of your music together now. I feel like, yeah. like you said, you're better off together than you were separate. So that's a really cool story. Yeah, it's, it is. Like we were actually making music like separate. But the thing is that, for example, I was getting like really bored for from mm -hmm. dubstep. I don't know. I wasn't like feeling like super. So when we start making music together, actually, we had a long journey together because when we started together, we started making like uh, more EDM music, like Melbourne Bounce, something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And mm -hmm. some like Progressive House. And then we tried with Bass House. And when we decided to go with the Bass House, we also get, uh, got bored from Bass House, actually. But now, like, we made this side house tune. Yes. Which, yeah, which, <laughs> which we, we love. Really well. We love. Yeah. <laughs> and so we decided to go that way, you know, because, I don't know, side house is something like, it's not like a new genre or something like that. It's not like something that's like, we invented something, you know. But mm -hmm. since it's like a mix from two different styles and it sounds like kind of different, we wanted to stick with that, especially because the first release was like, it worked really well. And we are also making drum and bass because we have been like drum and bass head for a long time. I have been like listening drum and bass for 20 years now. Oh, wow. wow. 20 uh, years. Yeah. Since I was Jeez. like 12 years. No, even more. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 20 years. Oh my God, yeah. I'm too old. <laughs> people, well, people in Europe also have been like listening to EDM, I feel like longer than people in America. Like drum and bass has been more exposed in Europe than over here. Like over here, people are just now starting to listen to drum and bass. Yeah, or yeah. at least other yeah, subgenres of EDM. Cause I feel like mm -hmm. there's a lot of people here, like a lot that are just main stage whores and just like big room and just the big DJs. But I think slowly people are being more open to other subgenres of EDM. <laughs> yeah, the, the thing that I feel about the United States, something that I have seen for a long time is that uh, like hip hop is really popular over there. Like hip hop and pop is really popular over there. Like everybody listens to that type of music. But everything about electronic music is about fashions. You know what I mean? Like, there is like in, in, the, in the United States, there is a fashion about future bass and everybody listens to future bass. Next mm -hmm. year is with, the, I don't know, uh, EDM. Next year oh. is with bass house. Like, are you saying people you know follow I mean? the trends? They yeah, follow exactly. what's popular. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, it feels like now, now, like now drum and bass is getting quite popular. So like all mm -hmm. American, I don't, I don't want to sell you, yeah. you know what I mean? 
because there's yeah. like like everywhere there are some people that it's not like this you know what i mean but i mean about the like the mainstream people you know what i mean yeah no that's so true and i actually saw mm. that like last year at lost lands at excisions festival i think that was the first year that there was like a drum and bass stage and it's funny because yeah. all yeah. of the headbangers, like all of my headbanger friends a couple of years ago, they were like, I don't like drum and bass. I would never listen to that. And now that it's becoming more like trendy, I feel yeah. like people are more open to it, especially those people who were just only headbangers before. Like now that Excision yeah. says it's cool, people are like, oh, OK, maybe it is cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. we will see. We will see. Probably next year, like drum and bass will be forgotten. Yeah, we will see. Don't manifest that. We don't need that. Yeah. <laughs> no, that will not happen. We need to get you guys out here. Damn. Yeah. No, I hope I hope drum and bass gets more popular in the United States because we are making a lot of drum and bass. So mm -hmm. have have yeah, you guys played in America before? Uh no, we we did a show like some years ago in Miami, mm -hmm. like for Mix Max label. We went there Ooh. to play, but yeah. But we haven't played in North America. It's actually really difficult to play there for us because we need like a special visa, working visa, and it's like super expensive and super hard to get. So you you need to get a really big tour to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. We it's would say, also, we would say. like now that COVID is starting to end, I feel like more people are applying for visas and it's taking so long. There's such a long line. Yeah, especially like because of COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's difficult. It's difficult. So we yeah, well, say. hopefully... Hopefully you guys can get a big tour lined up and if there's any way that we can support and help you guys get access to that yeah. visa or whatever, if it's like a write up on dubs of FBI or something, hopefully this interview yeah, helps too. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> thanks. Yeah. I mean, we really love your guys' music, especially after like, I didn't really know who you guys were until you guys released next to you. And that's when we first started working with welcome records. And that's like, I still have that track on repeat. Like, every yeah. week at least <laughs> yeah it was a crazy song actually <laughs> it was a what because it was a crazy song i don't even know how we made that song actually <laughs> how how did because, you guys make it <laughs> because the thing is that i used to be like a really big fan fan for a long time like i i, I used to listen like uh bling 182 sound 41 all these groups when i was like a teenager so i have always really like that type of music and I, I had this music a little bit forgotten for a long time but uh, since you know Machin Gun Kelly he started to, to mm -hmm. make this type of music I, I, I remember that I listened to his album and I was like oh I, I, I miss this type of music you know it's not it's not actually the same but he, he did a really good job with that you know so mm -hmm. I don't know I spent like like three weeks uh, listening to to all my Blink-182 and and Sam 41, all these group uh, CDs. And I, I don't know, I, I got obsessed with making a song with something like that, you know what I mean? So uh, we started to fill up um, like the, the, the breakdown where there's a lot of guitars and stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I started, I, I started to, to try different riffs and stuff. And we got that, that part, like the, the instrumental. And I was like, I, I only had that, you know, only the instrument, mm -hmm. the first part, yeah. not, not even the drop. And I was like, okay, <laughs> and now what, I, what, what can I do with this? You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. it's a pop, like a pop a bass, a instrumental, I, I don't know. So I, I started looking for, for vocalists for this style, but it was getting hard to get a really good one. So I don't know, I started looking into my sample library and I found a vocal that I really wanted to work with that one for a long time, but I, was, I wasn't finding the right instrumental to make the, to use this vocal because the vocal has a really weird feeling. Mm -hmm. So it was really difficult to, to create a song from that vocal. And I, it, was a, it was like magical because I put that vocal in the instrumental and it was perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah and then i don't know it was too too fast for a side house song so mm -hmm. we try a drum and bass i mean i don't know we use the i think one, the, the melody from the guitar for the mm -hmm. lead of the of the drop and we had this crazy song so that song has been supported by a lot of people too like it was in rocktronic it's still is it still in rocktronic yeah, yeah i think so yeah yeah it did pretty well yeah yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that was a big one. Also, the art for that was really cool. Yeah, yeah, that was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys have some really cool artwork, I will say. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. I re we 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 that that really was was really good actually. It worked really well. Hell yeah! Well, I think it's a good time for us to move into what we call a lightning round. Have you ever heard of that? <laughs> Not really. So we got six questions for you. We're just gonna spit them at you. Try to answer as quick as possible. If not, if you have, if it takes a longer answer, that's fine. But okay, call the lightning round because it's supposed to be quick. But okay, but uh, you know that English is not my first language, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you can always speak so, Spanish. I mean, yes, he can keep up with you. Yeah, but I think I need uh, some extra time. <laughs> some extra time, you know, because maybe I don't, I, I don't understand the question. Maybe I, I don't know how to answer the question. So. <laughs> It's okay. And also, be, yeah. you've been speaking English totally fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I try my best. I, that's how I feel um, in Spanish. <laughs> me hablo un poco español. <laughs> that's enough. That's enough, right? <laughs> no, that's how I feel in Spanish. I, uh, I can understand it. Speaking it takes a little bit. It's, I'm a little rusty. I live with a bunch of gringas anyway, so it's like... Oh, you know, really? Not live, but you know, I, I hang out with Chrissy a lot. She doesn't really speak Spanish, so it's you know, white girl, bunch of gringas, and I can't really practice my Spanish anymore. And my whole family's <laughs> in California, and we're in Colorado, so it's a struggle. But your Spanish, your, your family speaks Spanish. Mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. Where are they from? Uh, Mexico City. Oh, in nice! I love Mexico. Like it's I love like. It. It's like one of my favorite countries ever. Like actually, <laughs> the Mexican food is my favorite food. Oh, Same. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, oh my god. Like I'm... crazy. Like I have been there actually for like a lot of like no four times or something like that. I have I have actually played there. Oh wow. Like, yeah, what I played in Cancun. Uh -huh. in, in Cancun and also play Al Carmen. Mm -hmm. I, I actually uh -huh. play. We play in Coco Bongo. You wow. played in Coco Bongo? <laughs> yeah. That's legendary, actually. What? Yeah, that was, that was crazy. Yeah, it was like a, like a private party. But it was crazy playing there, actually. Yeah. But Mexico, oh my God. Mexico is like, the I best. Have, yeah, I have like so many stories about Mexico. It's, it's a country that I could I could come back like thousands of times, you know? Mm -hmm. Not, not mm -hmm. only because of the food, but also because of the, the vibe you know yeah mm -hmm. it's super cool yeah. yes he yes he when we were in san diego a couple months ago her dad her and her dad took us to tijuana and we drove down to the wine country in valle de guadalupe and it was just so cool like i had never been to that part of mexico so seeing like the the more low-key side of the country i have a really good appreciation for it mm -hmm. yeah it's i really i love mexico i mean i i can be a, i can be friends with somebody that doesn't like uh, like Mexican food, right? Like, oh my, <laughs> it's like, yeah, who yeah, are like, you? Are you from this planet? Like, what? yeah, exactly. <laughs> like my mm. all my friends, their favorite food is also Mexican food. You know, I, I have a, like a funny story that I I used to like uh, to meet like how no, how do you say? I used to date with a girl, and I remember that the first time that I took her to my favorite Mexican restaurant here in Madrid. She was like, I don't like like Mexican food. Can you please prepare like a quesadilla with like um, with cheese or something like that for me? And I was like, next. <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting it. You're not getting any more dates. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, never, bye. <laughs> I never dated with her oh, anymore. Man, no, no, no. But okay, so one last thing before we go into this. When I lived in Spain, you guys don't like spicy food. Like it was hard for me to find any hot sauces or anything when I was living in Barcelona. Yeah, because in Spain, we, we, we don't use sauce for the, for the food. Actually, Spanish food is not spicy. Like you have no. some stuff that could be spicy, but we, don't, we actually don't use, we don't use like ketchup and uh, barbecue and chipotle and we don't use that. For like food, condiments, you know. yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. like condi the condiments that we use uh, are like pepper, uh, you know that kind of real natural stuff but like but, salsa you know you need like salsa verde salsa rojo no nah, but we don't have sauce, that in Spain. like no, exactly no. i was we we, we use like <laughs> we, we use like peppers and some like spicy peppers for for cooking mm -hmm. some stuff but we don't yeah if you want spicy food you have to ask for like mexican or something like that or indian or something like that but not in spain 
yeah, that was the one I'm thing sorry. that that was the one thing that I was struggling with when I was living in Barcelona. I think no, my mom. Always... Oh, sorry. Yeah. I was going to say my mom. She actually flew out to Barcelona to see me for a week, and she brought me like a big old care package of like Valentina sauce, tahini, and like all yes. these hot sauces. It was so funny. Yeah, that's, what I, that, <laughs> like... that, that, that's what I was going to say. That you can always buy a Valentina in the supermarket. You have a supermarket, so yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right <laughs> well we could start off here so are you sure you want to do this i'm not i don't know I'm... <laughs> it's it's pretty they're, easy it's not easy it's not questions good. yeah they're easy have questions fun. all right so what festival do you prefer tomorrowland or perucaville perucaville yeah i have never been in any of those but i could rather prefer to play in perucaville probably yeah Ooh, yeah. Perucaville's on the bucket list. We did Tomorrowland a couple years back, but if we return to another festival over there, I want to do Perucaville. Yeah, I think it's more... And of, Rampage. Of, yeah, Rampage. Yeah, those are like more of, of our style. Like Tomorrowland is maybe too mainstream. I could, I could, like, I haven't ever been in, in, to, in Tomorrowland. I could love to go there, but it's not like, I, I, I could rather prefer like playing EDC, for, for example, than mm -hmm. Tomorrowland. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, next question. What has been your favorite performance in your career? Okay. Um, I don't know. There has been a lot of festivals, but I remember that there was a, a, a show in Mallorca. It's an island from Spain. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was one of my first shows ever. Like, um, it was actually the first time that I was playing like a dubstep show because I used to play uh, drum and bass. And it was in a really big, it, was, it wasn't a, even a club. It was a pub. And it was, I played for like 20 people. Oh, wow. Yeah, and that, it was crazy. Like, like those 20 people were like in a different level, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was probably because of the people and also because it was my like kind of first show, you know? Mm -hmm. And it, 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 it went like really, really crazy. That's, that's the one that I remember as like um, with fashion, you know <laughs> what I mean? But yeah, my, I think by, or, favorite performance was in boot house yeah oh you played boot house yeah two years ago like right like like one month before covid mm -hmm. start oh man we boot house. yeah we actually <laughs> did two sets one in in one of the back rooms and in the and we closed the main room mm -hmm. wow that's legendary dude you got right <laughs> in before covid you're so lucky you got that in yeah it was crazy it was crazy we're dying to go to boot house mm-hmm one day one day mm -hmm. all right next one here what is one country that you are dying to play in that you haven't yet uh yeah uh, yeah japan probably japan oh no yeah 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 i could love to play there i could i, mm. I could i could say you uh, usa but not for now <laughs> not for now <laughs> yeah it's something in, in my dreams you know but we will see Hey, We've well, heard that. it's if you dream it, you can do it. It's attainable. Yeah, it's totally attainable. Yeah. You got this. Yeah, but, uh, but as I say, so far it's really difficult to play in the USA for like like foreign people because all of the visa and stuff. We will see someday. Yeah, we've heard that Japan also really likes hard style. Yeah, yeah, the Japanese they are really passionate about bass music, mm -hmm. so. We could, yeah, mm -hmm. we have a lot of fans over there. Like every time that we release a song, the first people like tweeting and our song are from Japan. Oh yes, I love <laughs> You're this right. Song. It's like available on Spotify in Japan, but nowhere else in the world. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. And they're like posting it from yeah. Spotify onto their stories, and you like yeah. you can't have access to it yet, but they have access to yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, but they 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 are like so lovely with the. Uh, like with uh, with us, like they 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 are always giving feedback, and I don't know. We we receive a lot of messages from there. So sometimes people mm -hmm. is like they just listen the song, mm -hmm. and they they save it in their playlist, and that's all. But Japanese people is like, oh man, I love the song. You know, they write. <laughs> yeah, they're like diehards. They, they have to tell you that they like it. <laughs> it's amazing. Okay, this next question is one of our signature questions. Have you ever played the game Fuck Mary Kill? No. I mean, <laughs> so it's I don't like, know. <laughs> so we're going to give you three people and you have to decide okay. 
who you would fuck, who you would marry, and who you would kill if you had to. Oh, okay, okay, I know. Okay, so your three choices are Alert, Codeco, and Midnight Cult. <laughs> what kind of what type of question is this? <laughs> It's the hardest question you'll get asked. Okay, let's see, let's see. Codeco is actually like uh, the pretty guy, you know? He's a pretty guy. Pretty boy. Yeah, he's a pretty boy. So I, how can you ask me these questions? <laughs> well, you can say like, it could be it could be better if you ask me like Alice in Wonderland and... Oh, girls, yeah. Oh, you want girls, okay. okay. <laughs> we will um... do with these guys. <laughs> it's your game it's your game it's your game i mean yeah so i could i could um uh, fuck codeco probably yeah okay uh, pretty boy mm, all right yeah pretty boy married alert okay the cool guy and i could have to kill meet michael smh sorry dude <laughs> Sorry, man. You're not the pretty boy here. So this next question is, what is your pre-show routine? Meaning like, is there, is there a tradition that you have before you play a show? Is it something that you do specifically? Mm, not really. I used to, I, I usually like to go around the club to see the club, to see how mm -hmm. the people is, you know, I also like to listen to the, the DJ that is playing before us to see what is he playing how is people reacting to what he's playing you know i try to study the crowd a little bit yes read the crowd that's important yeah and that's all really i i used to smoke i used to smoke one cigarette before playing but i don't smoke anymore so i don't do that anymore good good <laughs> yeah but i, I normally i don't have like uh, anything that's all mm -hmm. i'm boring Boring, boring. Boring. Um, At least you don't smoke cigarettes anymore. That's a good yeah. thing. I'm just kidding. I, I do. I just. I just. I. I always do a backflip in the in the in the back in the how do you say in the green room. Always. I have to do a backflip. <laughs> I'm just <Okay>. kidding. <laughs> okay. Well, we need a video, or it didn't happen. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just yeah. kidding. Yeah. Next week at your next show, you gotta take a video, put you on Instagram. It didn't happen. You can try. Oh, yeah, it. we'll do it. I will do it for you. <laughs> um, one more question for you. It should be an easy one. What label would you love to release on that you've never released on before? Mm, like there's one label that I could I could love to release someday in my life, but I won't release because I don't do that type of music. I really mm -hmm. like Tool Room. You know Tool Room? No. It's like my house music. It's a house music label from... Yeah, I, I, I really like, because I also listen to a lot of house music. I really mm -hmm. like Tool Room. It's from Mark Knight. It's a DJ, house DJ. And it's like mm -hmm. one of the biggest, like biggest, biggest labels. And also Defected, you know Defected? Yes. It's one, yeah, it's like the mm -hmm. biggest house label right now. I also could like to release that, but I, I won't probably release that because I don't make house music. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, maybe it could be from, for me, bass music, maybe, I don't know, a slander label. Oh like, yeah, heaven uh, sent or good vibes. Good vibes, yeah. Or heaven sent, I don't care. One of those, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Maybe even like subsidia, yeah. but then again, mm -hmm. I don't know. Or mm -hmm. maybe uh, any drama based label. I don't know. We would see. Like I, I don't, UKF. I used to, yeah, I used to have a lot of like uh, labels in my bucket list, but not anymore. Yeah, you've come a long way. Yeah, yeah. You have your yeah, own label to, too. I, I, I really wanted to make to make it on spinning. Mm -hmm. That was like my biggest goal in life, like some years ago. And we we are we are we already released a couple of songs there, and I don't know Insomniac as well. Mm -hmm. I actually chased Welcome Record for a long time. Yeah, really, like, really long time. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it it, it's kind of hard to release on Welcome. Like you got to have a certain sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to be like, I, I, I still like really, I really still like Gaiso. I remember when he started like to to blow up, you know, I it really, I was like, 
what the fuck is this guy you know like <laughs> <laughs> what the, the fuck is his music like yeah. it was like it was like so it was really really different no yeah it was really it was. hard and it was like the energy you know of his music and his live sets and everything i was like damn i want to release his label you know what i mean mm-hmm. so i remember that i chased i think it was colin like yeah mm-hmm. our manager now mm-hmm. i chase him a lot to release on on welcome records we actually released once one or two songs we welcome like like right before you you started mm-hmm. i believe yeah. you did yeah mm-hmm. yeah but it was it was tricky to release with welcome actually yeah. Well, you, a lot of our followers love you guys. Like your release has done the best, one of the best that we've had. So yeah, it worked really yeah. well. I, I, I mean, I wasn't expecting like uh, a lot from that song because mm-hmm. it was a really weird song. You know what I mean? It was like, but once I started to listen to it again, I was like, man, it's a really cool song. And then I still how I I saw how it was working when it, mm-hmm. it got released. I did really well, honestly. It did. We have it, it on replay perfect. all the time. <laughs> it was perfect for welcome, actually. Yes. I have to make I have to make a new rock song. Well, we've got your EP coming up this summer. We got a single and then an EP. Yeah, but it's not like rock style, you know, like Kaiso style. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, yeah. welcome style. It's welcome style totally. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm I don't know. I'm keen to make a a new rock song. Ooh, well, Do send it. it over. If you need ears on it, hit us up. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, that concludes the lightning round. It wasn't that. Dip- it wasn't that bad, was it? It was pretty yeah, easy, it was good. right? It was good. Yeah. I thought that you were going to ask me something more like I don't know, confident. Like no, no confident. What's the word? Sorry, oh, because secret. sometimes, some sometimes I use I use Spanish words because sometimes are really similar in mm-hmm. English. But confident is not what I wanted to say. It was like, yeah, top secret, like personal, mm-hmm. something like that. So uh, yeah, that's good. Confidential, maybe. Yeah. So we wanted to yeah. say, yeah. Yeah, no, this is supposed to be fun and also kind of put you on the spot, but yeah, nothing crazy. So before we wrap up this whole interview, do you have any cool. final words? Well, <laughs> any final words? <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually. Yeah, I'm actually really excited to see how the people is going to react to the songs that we have uh, coming out together. They mm-hmm. are all like really important songs for us, you know, mm-hmm. because they are especially most of them we made them during the lockdowns here in Spain, you know, like the really really difficult moments for everybody. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I think they are really cool. I don't know. I'm really excited to release them, actually, <laughs> because we I don't know too. how it's. Yeah, I don't know how people is going to react to them. You know what I mean? Because now you don't know how people is going to react. You know, right. because sometimes the songs that you expect to be a hit, they they don't, they are not, and then you you release a song that you you weren't like feeling like a like a banger, and they make it big time. So, but mm-hmm. these songs, I I don't know. I really like them. The first one actually is is really cool, actually. Yeah. yeah. I don't well, know. if it, I don't know, I, if it I, yeah. if it helps you feel better, when we first heard them, we were like, "Oh my god, these are so good! We want to sign all of them." Literally, so. I was like, "Can we <laughs> sign all of them?" <laughs> but obviously, we had to narrow it down to a couple of them. So, <laughs> for, for strategy purposes, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. So, I mean, I I can I can wait one month actually. Can we release it like in two weeks? <laughs> Tomorrow. Tomorrow, tonight at midnight. New music Friday. Yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah we'll like, drop it right like, now. Like a, we, we could drop like one for free dollars, something like that. Surprise. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Subscribe. Surprise. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the end of our interview. We appreciate you for tuning in. I know it's pretty late where you are and you guys are super, super busy, but hoping that we can see you guys out here in the States soon. I have faith that you guys will be able to make it out here, yes. get a big tour. So we can have a party together. Yeah. Yes. Or maybe we'll see you when we go out to Europe. We'll be in mm-hmm. Iceland, which is obviously not Europe, but we'll be in Iceland, Italy for okay. Nameless Festival. We're going to Nameless okay. Festival to go see Kezo. And then we're going to go to Malta and Greece. So not Spain. If okay. we somehow end up in Spain, <sighs> if flights are cheap and we have to go fly out of Madrid, then 
maybe mm-hmm. we'll go there. But yeah. yeah, I will show you around for sure. 